Hello. Did you come here expecting a Nintendo Switch 2 review? Well, guess what? It's not. It's the Nintendo Switch 2 power adapter. Uh-oh. Everyone just left, didn't they? Okay, it's time for two adapters, actually, because I can't just do one. It's the Raspberry Pi 27-watt USB-C adapter with a special mode of operation and the Nintendo Switch 2 USB-C adapter, which has a mystery number of watts. We'll have to dig deeper to find out. Will this adapter work for other things? Well, we'll find out that and more as I explore these power adapters for their efficiency, power quality, isolation, special features, and just general performance. Obvio, mostly going to be about the efficiency. I will check both adapters on 120 volts and 230 volts AC to see how the performance differs around the world. There is an affiliate link, which earns me a couple percent, but costs you nothing in the description, as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. Raspberry Pi is up first. This adapter is a captive cable power adapter for powering your Pi. It's very purpose-built, and its main function is that it has a special mode of operation specifically designed for the Raspberry Pi 5, but that also makes it a proprietary and non-standard adapter. In general, there are a few things I look for on a power adapter. The safety listing, of course, is the main feature. This is usually some other company's marking on the device, so UL, ETL, SGS, MET, TUV are some of the common markings to look for. There are many others, of course. These mean the device went through some compliance testing and materials verification so that they fail and operate safely. It doesn't mean they are good for performance. The other mark, which has an EU counterpart but no one seems to talk about it, is the six in a circle. This does mean the device meets some minimum efficiency and a maximum idle power consumption criteria. There are proposed more strict criteria. The Pi adapter has these marks, of course. The adapter stops at 15 volts for the output, but it does have a 12 volt mode, so that's welcome. The performance is interesting. The adapter actually gets a little less efficient on higher voltage. I've covered why this is in other videos, and I'll talk very briefly about this later on. In terms of the basic performance, this adapter did about as expected. The primary use is lower voltage, the cable is captive, and this probably contributes to some of the loss. So with mostly five volt modes, it's not that efficient. For a five volt adapter, it's doing well though. There's a reason we use more volts to transfer power. This is because the current is the loss leader within the system resistance. At low voltage, the current has to be high. This is the main issue with the adapter. It's optimized for lower efficiency operation. It also is not compliant with the PD specification, which is fine, but it may confuse devices not Pi based. It is going to power your Pi with some hats, no problem. I'll cover the thermals and isolation a bit later on. Okay, the one you actually clicked on the video for, the Nintendo Switch 2 USB power adapter. How the heck do I use the controller for this thing? The graphics on this are terrible. I thought they, oh, it's, it's just the power adapter. I guess that price was too good to be true. I mean, the short answer, it's a 60 watt USB-C power delivery PD adapter from Delta Electronics. It's going to do everything you need it to do, and being from Delta, I expect it to last a little longer than some others. It's purpose-built for the Nintendo Switch 2 dock and charging, and it's gonna do this properly, and you don't have to have any questions about compatibility. It does come with a USB-C cable. The cable is a 60 watt only cable. That meaning this cable does not have the chip or the e-marker allowing for power levels above 60 watts. This means this cable will not work with several devices that need more than three amps on any mode of operation. As you can see here, when I try to draw 70 watts from this 100 watt adapter with this cable, it shuts off. Of course, the adapter itself is limited to 60 watts, so this isn't a problem, or is it? We'll check the resistance of this as part of the USB cables video. Coming soonish. The adapter's basic performance is pretty decent. The voltage is stable in every mode offered, and although the ripple looks a little high, it didn't really change much for each mode, so it's just the way this one operates. It's going to be fine for the needs it's designed for, charging batteries and powering some digital circuits. The idle power usage is very low. The low level efficiency is also high. Not much to say beyond, it's a pretty good charger. If this thing is good thermally and the isolation wise it's looking good, then it's probably a decent choice for the power level. As expected, low power quality on the AC side. I'll talk about this shortly. Time to compare these chargers. They really are different devices. 
but I'm just going to compare them to better adapters. The Pi, as I understand, you are stuck with because you need 5 amps and 5 volts. Do you really? I've seen some people use these with lower current adapters a lot. I'm going to have to get a Pi 5 to investigate, or I'm sure one of you out there has done this and can comment. Thermally, these chargers both went the distance in terms of staying on. Being good name brand builds, I would expect the performance to meet the rating on the box though. The Raspberry Pi being a lower power adapter, it doesn't get that hot overall since it's not dissipating that much power. This will get hotter in a 5 amp 5 volt mode though, but if your Pi used 25 watts without a serious fan and heatsink continuously, it would melt. The Nintendo, like many USB-C bricks, gets pretty hot, but it did stay on. It is fairly efficient and the case seems to be at a pretty even temperature, so it's doing a reasonable job of getting that heat out. There can always be longer term concerns, but this looks good compared to many other companies' offerings. The Switch's battery is pretty small and the CPU is highly efficient, so I don't expect this to ever be operated near this power level. I am curious how low you can go for a power adapter though. Does a 45 watt adapter work? How about a 30 watt one? In terms of isolation, which is the thing that separates the dangerous side, the mains, from you on the low voltage side, the Raspberry Pi is a bit more leaky. It's not bad, and I've seen much worse, but it does conduct a little more AC current. The Nintendo does excellent here. They definitely spent some time to optimize the leakage performance of this adapter, considering you'll be using it with a handheld. That makes sense. In terms of weight, the single port Anchor 100 watt is crazy light and small again. It's probably the adapter I'd choose for this job. If the Pi is fine with 3 amps and 5 volts, then it will work for that too. The Nintendo isn't bad though, relatively small and lightweight, and going to deliver more than enough power for charging a switch, powering the dock, and charging the battery without overheating and overloading. In terms of value, the Nintendo is on paper a bit expensive, but it's not really. You get one with the Switch 2 when you buy it. So there are going to be tens of millions of these in circulation for a very long time, and I don't think you need to replace it. I wouldn't plug 10 of them into the same circuit, of course, which leads into the next topic. It's not too important for power adapters at this size. It's really when you aggregate lots of these on a single circuit that it becomes problematic. So these, with no surprise, lack power factor correction. When comparing the waveforms for the Pi, the Bassius GAN 3 is able to beat its performance wise even with its PFC circuit active. The Bassius is old and a bit noisy. They still have quality control issues, but it's a good power supply. The 230 volt performance on the Pi adapter is worse because the losses at the higher current short duration pulse of the input stage beats the efficiency gains of higher voltage and expected lower current. Typical of a power adapter of this design though. The Nintendo is the same basic story. It's just barely gaining efficiency on 230 volts. It's really optimized for operation at like 80 volts AC in. It operated fine at 70 volts AC in too, actually with substantially better power quality, although a bit lower efficiency. The under voltage lockout kicked in below that. But it is, again, as expected for a power adapter of this power level, and again, using one is fine and it doesn't matter. Just don't count all the other low power adapters on the same phase in your particular domicile while being a particular individual. Nuts and bolts of it, the claimed efficiency number is overstated a little on sinusoidal AC power. When looking at the idle graph for these, these new adapters are awesome. They really do a good job shutting the power down when they aren't being used. Very impressive on both the Pi and the Nintendo adapter. On 230 volts or 120 volt operation, these do well. I threw in a few comparisons to some larger adapters and these win over those, keeping that zombie power to a minimum. The low level efficiency, so 0.1 watts, was good on both two, around 50%. The average power consumption graph is more spread out. The Raspberry Pi shows what it can do here. Its operation on either 120 or 230 volt operation puts it in the lower tier of performance. If compared with the best 30 watt options on the market, this still wouldn't hold up. It does meet efficiency requirements though. The Nintendo is a pretty good performer in terms of average efficiency. It's not a surprise from a premium power adapter company, Delta. Is it the best one? No. Is it purpose built and going to sell like crazy and work with the Switch? Yes. Conclusion time. So, so, so many power adapters have been tested. These are just two more. The Nintendo adapter is pretty good. I really like 
that they went with the fully standard USB PD adapter, and this means that the device should be compatible with all manner of third-party adapters as well. And this power adapter can work with lots of other devices. Do you need to swap it out? No. It's purpose-built, and it's going to do exactly what you need it to do. Power your switch, the dock, and charging needs anytime and anywhere. It meets all the criteria a power supply needs to meet. It stays on, which is a big step over a lot of third-party adapters. It has good isolation and stable voltages. The Raspberry Pi adapter is another purpose-built adapter. It's made to supply higher current at lower voltages. This does hurt the efficiency, and you can see this in the data, but it also does something welcome. It stays on. It had very stable voltages and also meets the criteria a power supply needs to meet. The main question on this one is why did they decide to go proprietary? But that's a question for the community. Does the Pi work with other USB adapters? Am I going to use either of these adapters? No, I don't really have the need. The data is provided though, so let me know if one of these adapters is your go-to and why. Thanks for watching. There's links in the description. Goodbye.